Alright, this is a short movie on how to find stopping distance when given kinetic energy and the force applied to an object. So up at the top we can see that we're given that the kinetic energy of the object is 500 joules. So we're going to go ahead and write that in our space here for givens, 500 joules. And then we know something. We know looking at this question here, how much work is done to stop the object. We know if the kinetic energy of the object is 500 joules, then 500 joules of work is done to stop the object. So I'm going to go ahead and write that as a given as well, just to remind myself of that relationship between work and kinetic energy. And as I read further, it says, if you apply 100 newtons of force, so that's also a given, force is 100 newtons, how far is the stopping distance? So we're looking for distance. Now when I look at what I'm given and I look at the problem, I see that I'm given work, force, and distance. So I believe this is going to be a work problem where work is equal to force times distance. So there's my tool. So I'm going to take that formula, I'm going to take what I'm given here, and I'm going to just plug and chug. I get 500 joules of work equals 100 newtons of force times D. And D is what I'm solving for, and right now D is being multiplied by 100 newtons. So to get D by itself, I'm going to need to divide both sides by 100 newtons. So I divide by 100 newtons. That cancels, leaving me D equals a relatively easy math problem. 500 divided by 100 is 5. The problem is the units. We don't normally give units for distance as in joules per newton. Most people would look at you pretty strangely if that's what you told them the units were. But if you'll remember, a joule is a newton meter. They are exactly the same thing. And if I, write, if I think of that as newton meters, then I see that the newtons cancel out and my units are in meters. So the distance the object travels will be 5 meters.